Hallelujah. Just for you to know, how many of you have been joining the morning prayers? You've been joining? Look at, your neighbor is not joining? Please, put on your hands. Will you show that? I want to show you the power of prayer before I even talk about it. Will you point that testimony that I shared in the first service? And this is what prayer does. I got this testimony, I think it was yesterday. You know, look at this. This is like a traditional calabash and some fidodido kind of thing. You know, it's like local jazz. You know, I don't know what to call that. What do they call it in English? Huh? Muti. <laughs> so this is what it is. See the testimony. Good morning, Pastor. I've been housing the guy in my house for over four years. This guy has costed us millions in different incidences. The last one was very catastrophic. It was an accident during the lockdown that left a lady amputated both legs. And the vehicle destroyed. Yesterday morning, the first day of research, my husband was led to clean up the room where he was staying. See, it's not enough to pray, receive instructions. I'm telling you. Because how do you clean up the room of someone that you're housing? Those are things that can only come by instructions. Glory to God. He said, we're told to clean up the room. He came back. Um, to clean up the room. My mother was led to clean up the room where he was staying. He has not come back to the house after the accident and packed his belongings so his friends can take them out of the house. So he had finished cleaning up and he was led to look up in one of the wardrobes and he saw this black bag and in it was wrapped some charms and this boy has been using them and this is a great testimony and I want to give God praise for deliverance. And this guy has been living with them. This is awful. You know, when you don't pray, see, this, the thing about prayer is this, and about anything like, what you are missing by not praying, you don't even know. It's when you begin to pray, like, oh, wow, that happened. And it's amazing because, you know, this is one of the testimonies. You will not believe it that on the prayer, on the on- online prayer, I've had at least, last month, we had about 500 testimonies. 500. Um, I think... Ev- by, I think from Wednesday to Friday, there are about, I'm not sure, we we'll will have close to 10,000 people joining the prayer. Even 10,000 after, like when we pray and afterwards, it's now about 10,000 people that join. So, all of you that are not praying or not joining, like, I really feel bad for you because you don't even know what you're missing. It, uh, let me just read some testimonies to you. You know, I, I don't want to read some testimonies. And by the way, um, when, when, Wednesday online prayer, we're having communion in the morning. So you need to get your communion elements. So you need to get your communion elements and bring it, you know. So you get your bread and wine. So as we're taking communion from where I am, you also take where you are. Let me just share some testimonies with you. And if you want to join, the good thing is that there are more platforms to join right now. You can join by following me on Instagram. There's now Facebook. There's now YouTube. So you can even go back and watch it on YouTube. And the good thing is that, you know, out of about 10,000 people that follow this prayer, about 1,500 are from outside the country, from Canada, from the UK, from this. So some of you are tagging people. I, we wrote that we are, by Wednesday, I thought it were 17 countries that pray. So we posted it and we said, that's not correct. We're joining from UAE. We're joining from Germany. We're joining from, you know, people are just writing places they're joining from. I'm only saying that if everyone is joining to pray, why are you not joining to pray? Glory to God. Let me read some testimonies to you. Apart from the fact that it impacts you in your spirit, the testimonies have been really phenomenal. They've been really phenomenal. Um, well, you know, there was a word that says, all that you lost will recover. And this testimony is the last one I posted. And this guy said, an agent that was helping to, meant to help him fix his visa took his passport. And he said, the passport had been with for over two years. He said, Pastor, you said all that you lost will be recovered. He said, that day, the agent called me. He said, Pastor, Pastor, I have my passport back. I've done everything to get him to give me my passport for two years. He said, this is giving me without me asking for anything. You know, I'm, I'm just telling you several testimonies. Um, this one says, for as long as I can remember, I've had irregularities in my period. But I never took it seriously. For me, it was a reason to, not to buy pad and save money. I didn't pay attention. So, that, so I can't tell you particularly how long I've not seen my period this year. She can't tell how long she has not seen her period this year. It says, but I remember a time that I saw my period in January and till August, I didn't see it again. It said there was a time in her life she saw the period in January and till August, she didn't see it again. But this year, she can't remember when last she saw it. She said, this year, oh wow, 
I've not seen my period in months. And every time I go shopping, I skip the tampon rack because I have one and a half pack I've not used since last year or something like that. Yesterday, you shared a testimony about a woman that gave him birth to two last year and had a two-month-old baby. You spoke about hormonal imbalance. And that means, I didn't know, it means I wasn't forming eggs because I couldn't menstruate. It hit me hard and I was like, wow, I'm not forming eggs because I can't remember when last I saw my period. I said to pray about it yesterday. This morning, while I was watching the morning prayers, you said the lady was holding a stomach with hormonal issues. I was literally holding my stomach. You say, ha, ah, Pastor B, I, pr- I started to pray more. And believe me, as I typed this, my period just came five minutes ago. Yeah. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I'm just trying to read some testimonies to you. Um, um, yeah. I said, I mean, so many testimonies. Th- this is my second testimony in September. Several testimonies. It's all there from people that had growth on their body. The growth disappeared. People that got jobs. One person sent me a testimony. You know what he sent me? He sent me two, 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 two screenshots. He said, Pastor, this is a screenshot where they said, well, sorry, we cannot employ you. He said, this is a screenshot where you said, we'll recover everything. What they said, sorry, we'll employ you. He said, they sent me those two things. So it's really powerful. So what do you have to do now? You have to get out your phones. The, um, you get, get out your phones and follow the, um, the, the Instagram handle and put on your notification, you know, and, you know, at the back, can you help me put up the details? Thank you. Follow, follow it, you know, follow Facebook. And um, some of you, and it's also a mixed error. Some people say it's too expensive in terms of data. Mixed error is just audio, so you can do mixed error. Um, Facebook and YouTube consume less of data, you know, so you can also, I mean, you, can, you have all the options to do that. But all of you that attend, will you please share the link with all of your friends? How many of you have told, how many of you have your friend, there's a guy in our church, he's very well to do, and he told me, he said, Pastor, you know, I'm not one of those people that normally share, 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 share. But this one, because the way it has touched me, he said, Pastor, ah, he said, Pastor, the way it touched me, I'll tell you, you said, he told me, I can't remember what I said, what was the day for, that you'll be remembered. He said, Pastor, I did a deal for NMPC. The paper, I went to get the paper from the ministry. They refused to give me the paper. He was a lawyer. He is a lawyer. He said, it became an embarrassment. He said, I bribed them in millions. The paper did not come out. He said, the day you said so, they called me by themselves from the ministry and said, come and pick up your paper. He said, so from that, I began to share with my friends. He said, I shared with all of my friends. He said, even some of my friends, I was like, would they appreciate it or not? He said, I just shared. He said, you don't believe it, Pastor. You don't believe this. I don't know what their testimony is, but the way they call me back and thank me, something happened to them. He said, because I know them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you can please go ahead. Bring out, this is a good time to bring out your phones. And if you want to follow on Instagram, follow on Instagram. If you, and take it. So, tomorrow morning, we're praying at 6.30 a.m. And, um, Please share, share with all your friends or your contacts, either in Nigeria or overseas, share with them. It will be a huge blessing to them. Today, we'll be teaching about prayer and how to be effective in prayer. So let me tell you something I know. One of the most frustrating things about praying is when you pray and you do not see the result of what you're praying for. That's why some people break down when it comes to prayer, become frustrated. Because it's really annoying. I get to pray. I can't see the result. Sometimes I get a text and someone says, I've done everything. I don't know why God is not answering my prayer. I've been trying to pray for someone to get married to. Someone says, I've, I've been praying to God for this deal I have with, um, um, w- w- with a certain company, but I can't get an approval. And I'm wondering, what else can I do? So as a, as a pastor, I get the frustrations of people that pray and there is no result about their prayer. Sometimes it's a health condition. Maybe a neighbor has a cancer. Someone is really sick about something. And, you know, and they said, you know, I, I, I don't, I've done everything. So what we want to talk about today is that why, how do you get your prayer to get things to move? How do you get your prayers to get things to move? Someone say hallelujah. So Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Therefore, this is Jesus talking about prayer, verse 24. He said, therefore, I say unto you that what things soever you desire, that's the first principle. He says, what things soever you desire, and I explained this to you. I said, the more specific your prayer is, the more dynamic 
Power is released. So people go to God in prayer and say things like this, Lord, I'm believing you for business expansion. And that person runs a business that does an annual turnover of 50 million. And when it's 50 million, the business goes from 50 million to 52 million. And they say, Lord, I prayed for a breakthrough. I didn't see it. But you prayed for increase. 50 to 52 is increase. Yes or no? Exactly. So as far as God is concerned, he answered the prayer. The problem is that you did not say what you desire. So the prayer was left up to what? Was left to the wind. And remember that angels mostly are used to execute prayers. And when angels come, because they don't read minds, they operate within what your words say. So if you say that I want, um, you say, Father, I just want a man to marry me. That's good. You want a man to marry me. So this guy comes, he's not what you look like. You think he's a terrible person. But what did you say? You want a man to marry me. The person that's come is not a dog, he's a man. Prayer has been answered. You say, Lord, I want a job. You get a job that pays you 25000 naira. Is it not a job? But the scripture is clear. It says, whatsoever you desire, why can't you? See, let me tell you something. If I ask you and say, what do you want to eat? You don't tell me food. You tell me, um, you know, like maybe, maybe rice, maybe jollof rice with um, um, so boiled egg and you give me the scripture. But you tell me what you desire. How come with God we can't say such things? And the reason why most people cannot express that desire in prayer is because of fear. The fear that I will be disappointed. And listen, once your prayer comes from a place of fear, it will never work. Because fear, prayer works by faith. So see what it says. He says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, that desire must be clear, that desire must be specific. What does it say there? It says, when you pray. Now this is the next thing. He said, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So the first thing about prayer is the fact that it, that should be clear. The second thing about prayer, and this is what we, this is the reason why a lot of prayers are not effective. He says, when you pray, believe you receive them. Listen to me. It is the work of the one that prays to receive what he prays for. This is a dimension of prayers that's not been taught. It is the work of the one that prays to believe. And to receive it. So what most of us, this is what we've been taught. Most of us have been taught how to pray. Most of us have not been taught how to receive. And that's why a lot of people are professionals in praying, but they are not effective in receiving. There is a lot of prayer going on, but there is no result to show for the prayer. They have prayed and prayed and prayed about the career, but there's no significant tangible progress. They have prayed and prayed and prayed and talked about their business. There's no significant tangible progress because they've, been, they've learned how to what? How to pray, but they've not learned how to receive. So traditionally, this is what we do. When I finish praying, thank you, just I walk away and that's it. And that's why the prayer is not working because that's not the way prayer is designed to work. Let's look at the next verse. He says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. He says, when you pray, it tells you the next thing to do. He said, believe that you receive them. Ah, what does that mean? Number one, is the duty of the person that prays to receive. That's the first thing. But he says, when you pray, believe. So it's your duty. I'm not just praying, I must receive. How? Why? He says, believe you receive them. Look at the next line. And you shall have them. If you are going to have them physically, you are going to first believe you receive them. Most of us have been taught how to pray, but we have not been taught about that place of receiving. Someone says, okay, I've learned it. Okay, so when I pray, I must receive. Question, what is receiving? The Bible tells us what receiving is. Verse 24 again. He says, this is how you receive. How do you receive? He says, believe. That you receive them. So how do you receive? We receive in prayer by believing. In, in, in prayer, believing is receiving. Believing is what? Receiving. That's what it is. Believing is receiving. What happens to most people is this. They are praying. And as they are praying, their prayer is one thing. But what? Their believing is another thing. I'm going to show you some instances. Have you noticed that Anna, Anna could, every year, Anna went to the temple and would go and pray for a child and she would cry. And she would cry and she would cry. But she never believed it. Someone said, how do you know she never believed it? I will show you why. The year she believed it, see how she believed it. Eli came and says, God will grant you your petition. 
the Bible says, and the countenance of Anna changed. The reason why I had respond change was because in her mind, she believed she received something. That's what she believed. So it changed. If you get to the place of prayer and live the same way we prayed, you didn't believe anything happened. If you believe something happened, your response will change. And guess what? The same year that Hannah believed that happened to her, everything changed. Is it possible to pray and not believe? Of course. And let me say something to you. You don't receive what you ask for in prayer. You receive what you believe. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? You don't receive what you prayed for. You receive what you believe. How do I know? Jesus said in Matthew, what, what, what did Jesus Christ say? In Matthew chapter 9 verse 21, he says, as you have believed, be it unto you. Not as you have asked. He said, as you have believed. Matthew chapter 9 verse 21. Can you put it on the screen, please? Matthew 9 21. Quickly, please. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 21. The Bible says, okay, okay, look at this. This is an example of believing. For the woman said within herself, if I may but touch the helm of his garment, I shall be whole. What did she believe? That was a believing. That because she did not just say, I want to be healed. Her belief was that the moment I touched, she was able to establish the receiving point. The moment I touched the hem of the garment, I'll be made whole. So the Bible, so, so what happened? The moment she touched, she was made whole. The challenge is that a lot of Christians are praying, but they're not believing. So let me give another example here. I want to give another example. An example. The Bible says in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, what happened? This is what happened in the book of Acts. Peter was arrested in prison and they were going to kill him. And as they were going to kill him, the church said praying. Just said praying. A young girl, as we were praying, was by the door. When Peter knocked, co -co 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 -co, the young girl went back to meet other people praying and said, Hey, Peter is at the door. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what they told the young girl? They told her that you are mad. You are crazy. Something's wrong with your head. Why did they say that? They said, Because Peter was praying for is in prison. Question. They were praying that God will release Peter from prison. God released him. They didn't believe it. So, who did God answer the prayer? The only person praying in faith in that room was that girl. How do I know? As all other were praying there, the girl was by the door. Saying that if the angel will release him, I need to be close to the door to what? Open the door. Because when you believe in prayer, it affects your action. I'm telling you. Let me give an example. Because what happens to us is that we are praying this way, we are believing this way. We are praying this way. We are believing this way. And it's, it's not what we are asking for in prayer that happens. It's what you are believing for. Let me give an example. Let's look at the book of Zach um, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Verse 11. Zachariah, was, I've been praying for a child. You remember the, the story of Zachariah and Elizabeth? We hope you remember the story. Alright. So the Bible says, an angel appeared, verse 11, and there an angel appeared there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, saw the angel, he was troubled and, fe and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is what? Thy prayer is what? And thy wife shall do what? Bear a son, and thou shalt call his name what? Question. What happened next? Zechariah said, Angel, how will we have a child? Ah, how? What are you talking about? The angel said, excuse me, you are the one that was praying that you want to have a child. The message came that that prayer is granted. He said, you, he said, you are asking how? Because he didn't believe. The reason why this miracle happened was this. God had a divine plan that superseded what? Zachariah. If not that one, it would have been aborted. It would have been aborted. So, what, what did he say? The angel said, before you use your mouth to interrupt the process of miracle, you'll be done for till, till birth. You'll be done until the miracle happens because you're going to use the unbelief you have in your mouth to destroy the miracle. I I'm saying this to you because, and if you say in church, he'll be praying, he'll be praying, he'll be praying. But meanwhile, what happened? He was not believing. I'm saying so because there are a lot of people that are professional prayer warriors that have no result in their prayer. And the reason there's no result is this. There is no commensurate belief in that prayer. I'll give an example. So you see someone saying that, ah, 
I'm praying, I'm praying to God, I want to lose weight. How many of you, how many of you want to lose weight? It's a prayer point. How many of you want to lose weight? It's a prayer point. Let me tell you something there. If your prayer point has not affected your diet, you are not believing. The reason why is this. Everybody listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. When you believe, believe is a mental image. It will begin to affect you. This is the reason why a lot of Christians pray for prosperity, but they are poor. Because they are praying for prosperity, but they are believing poverty. So, you only act in line of what you believe. So, you are praying for prosperity, you cannot save. You are praying for prosperity, you cannot invest. You are praying for prosperity, you keep spending money as if all the money belongs to you. And you are wondering, why is my life like this? The reason why is that, although you are praying, your belief does not add up to your prayer. And what you receive is not what you prayed for. What you receive is what, what you are believing for. You see, you know, this, this fasting and prayer is very hot. The one we're doing this here, very powerful. I, Pastor Luke is here. She leads, um, she leads the group of those that want a baby. You know, and, you know, I was praying for each of the groups. As I prayed for them, I had the word. And God says that um, I should tell the group, number one, they should go and get, they should do up a baby room and buy things for the baby. I said, Lord, why? He said, I'm teach, I want to teach them practically. I said, how? He says, whatsoever you desire, for them to have a baby room, they have to decide if it's a man or a woman, if it's a boy or girl. God was focusing that desire. He said, for them to take money, 500,000, 700,000, to go and buy baby things, do room, they must really believe it will happen to them. I said, oh my God. This is, this is the missing link. The missing link is that we keep praying, but we believe something else. You are praying that, Lord, you, see, some of you are praying that, Lord, I, I, I want to, you know, um, uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I need funding. I need 300 million naira for funding for business. But that funding, before someone can give you 300 million naira, there are some documents they need. They will not just give you and say that we love, love your face. So, if you believe it, you will be arranging the document because you know the time is coming and the person can present it. Glory to God. So what happens is that there is praying, but there is no believing. And it says, the way you receive is that we receive by believing. Let me show you. James chapter 1. Let's go, let's go ahead. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Are you here? James chapter 1. Verse 5. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not or withholds. And guess what? It shall be what? Giving him. See the next verse, verse 6. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wings and tossed. Verse 7. Let not that man think. Say the next line. Let not that man what? Think that what? Note that the scripture did not say God will not give to him. It said he will not be able to receive. It's not as if God will not give the baby. It's not as if God will not give the promotion. It's not as if God will not give the marriage. It's not as if God will not give the business expansion. God will give it because he's kind. But because the person is unbelieving, he will not be able to receive what is given. This is what we call suspended blessing. It's there for you, but you cannot take it. He says, look at what he says. He says, for let not the man think he shall be able to receive. He didn't just say, wisdom will receive anything. He said, he shall be able. This is so powerful. He didn't say, the wisdom will. He said, this man will not be able to receive anything. And many of you are here. If you want to be sincere, you cannot boast of any answer prayer in your life that you can remember. And this is the reason why. You know what I'm talking about? You cannot boast that I've, my prayer has been answered. Even the one that was answered, you know it was a fluke. And the reason is simple. He says, this man, why? He is what? He's doubting. Look at the next verse. The Bible says this, and he explains why. He says why? A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Why is he double-minded? She's double-minded. One mind, my prayer. This is what I'm asking for. I don't mind my believing, but this is what I'm doing. So when the angel comes, he's confused because there's a direction here, there's a direction here. And God says, it can't work that way. He said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. Are you here? 
So you are praying that Father, I want to get married. I receive my husband in Jesus' name. But you receive your husband in Jesus' name. You don't go to where people can toast you. Are. You, you don't do anything. Say, they say, make up. They say, no, I can't kill myself. Or I can't kill my, myself. Let me tell you something. You don't believe you receive your husband. I'm telling you. You don't believe you receive your husband. Because if, question, if you believe you receive your husband, you will start behaving in that way. There is a way. Let me tell the law of belief. When you believe something, it affects your mind and begins to make you act like that. Yes or no? Why don't you play with snakes? It's not because any of you have seen snake bite or kill someone before. It's what you heard about snake or watch about snake. And your subconscious absorbed it and it became a behavior. If because you believe that snakes are dangerous, your subconscious absorbed it. It became a behavior. You believe that snakes are dangerous. That's what happened to you. The same thing. Because you believe that. So when you believe, so your belief is an ex, it shows as an expression of something inside. So if I believe that Sean is going to come and ask me out, won't I put out my best? Look for people that matured single. I can bet you they don't put out their best. Because the single who wants to marry me. I'm telling you, the mature singles you know, over 35, over 40, watch it. They don't, they, they, they say, I beg, I can't tell myself. And you think that you are in faith. The challenge is that the first thing, because if you are believing, believing is active. <laughs> believing is active. Believing is all active. You are asking, I need 450 million naira for this. Even bank statement, um, income and expense document, complaint history and profile, you don't have. And you are believing someone give 150 million. I want to ask you, if they ask you, what are you doing? Show us something. What do you want to show them? But the reason why you don't have that paper is not because you don't have it. Because you don't believe the money will come, so you don't prepare for it. And the Bible said, blessed is he that believeth, for there shall be what? Performance. Glory to God. You heard one of the testimonies from the online prayer. I said that the Lord said that in the next 30 days, you will get pregnant. One lady wrote it down, wrote the date. Pastor Balaji spoke to me on this date, I will get pregnant. Ladies and gentlemen, was she the only one blinging up for a baby? No. 30 days after, she said, Pastor, I didn't see any sign that I'll be pregnant. What happened? I took the test, tested. He said, Pastor, I was positive. He said, I'm breaking down in tears today. I'm breaking down in tears. I don't know. This is incredible. Question, how did it happen? Believing. Because when you believe, it affects your action. You say, I'm believing God for a job. I'm living for a job. My brother, how many CV have you sent out yesterday? Did you say that yesterday? You are not believing for nothing. It's cheap. See, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Don't say, yeah, I believe I've become the governor. You can't become the governor. I've been in a political party. Because let me tell you something. This is my problem with born again. We just, let me tell you, by, the time we, by sometimes when born again talk, you really think they are stupid. Do, do you know what I mean? Because what they are saying is not faith. It's just arrant nonsense. Things that have no total presumption. Someone that has not had 100,000 in the bank before. He said, I'm believing that God will give me 100 million. Let me tell you something. You don't understand what 100 million is. Let me tell you, if you have had 10,000 in the bank before, if someone gives you 100 million, they will freeze your account. In Nigeria, I hope you know, they will tell you to come and prove the money is yours and where you found it from. The reason is, I'm talking about capacity. So what happens to people? People are going to prayer and they are asking for things they cannot believe for. And you know what that call is called? Bible calls it vain worship. What is vain worship? When your mouth is saying something and your heart does not agree with it. The Bible says, in vain do they worship me because their mouth is saying good things but their heart is far from me. So it says it's vain. Vain means it's zero. Vain is zero. So zero times worship is zero. So many of you, is vain prayer. Your mouth is vocalizing something but your heart does not agree with it. So it's vain prayer. Zero. And you be saying, God is not ever going to... See, this happens. Look at Israel. Israel said, ah, we want to come out of, the, of Egypt. We want to go to the land. They prayed, prayed, prayed. God said, Moses, did they enter promised land? No! Why? Their belief was to go back in Egypt. And they died there. They asked for Canaan, but they died in Egypt. The Bible says, a double-minded man. That's what he is. I said, I want to have a great marriage. Great marriage. And the way you are abusing your husband... You are not praying for a great marriage. I say, Pastor, you don't know my husband. Let me tell you something. When you know what you believe, your belief will control you. 
Sometimes people come and tell me about their spouse. Pastor, Pastor I want to pray for my husband. He's a very useless man. They abuse him. <laughs> I know when I say prayer, I say they don't need to pray. Your prayer has been answered. Why? If that's what you believe about your husband, what are you praying for? The same thing, and it's not just even men. My wife is a troublemaker. My wife is this. My wife is that. You've a fan answer to your prayer. Because you say you are asking for a good wife, but you believe she's terrible. You are unstable in your ways. What will happen? The same thing. Yeah, here you are saying, I, I want a great husband. But you say, all the good men are, are married. Only the bad ones are available. All, all men are irresponsible. Is that not what you believe? And you're asking for, and you are yet, you are asking to, for God to give you a great husband. You've answered your prayers yourself. This is where prayer works. It says, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe, you receive them. So, what, what do you receive? You don't receive what you ask for, you receive what you believe. In fact, this is very powerful. You don't just receive what you believe, you receive how you believe. Mm. What does that mean? Jesus Christ said to someone, he said, as thou has believed, be it unto you. What does that mean? It's not what to believe. Oh, this is now how. How means if you believe that your God is slow, it's slow. Because some of you say that, ah, you know God doesn't answer quickly. That's, that's your own experience. He doesn't answer quickly. My own God answers by fire. And the reason why you believe that some certain things are brought into your system. Who said, did you hear what God said? God says, why you are yet calling, I've heard. Someone said, you know that, you know that if you use jazz now, because some of you say, yeah, you know if it's jazz now, jazz works faster than prayer. What? And I'm saying so because a lot of born against believe this. That if I need things to be done quickly, I can't depend on prayer. Guess what? The reason why it's like that for them is that that's exactly what they have believed. That is exactly what they have believed. But when Elijah was going to call down fire, the bar, jazz. When the Bible says the prophet of bar, you don't know what that means. One of the rituals of the prophet of bar was that naturally they can call down fire. It was their service. It was the product their religion offered. They could call that fire. So, Elijah said, let's take something you are good at. Let's go there. He said, let's take something. No, if I take my own area now, you think that I took it to unknown territory. Let's go to, you, are, you can call that, call that fire. Bible says, they were there for morning time. They began to cut themselves. When Elijah came at the evening sacrifice, he put the sacrifice out. He said, pour water. Why? There's something about confidence in prayer that makes prayer work. The other reason why some of you struggle with prayer is not working is this. Many of you don't believe personally that your prayer can work. You believe if Pastor Luke prays for you, if Pastor George prays for you, if Pastor Stacy prays for you, ah, it's work like fire. But me to pray, let me tell you something. The only reason why you believe in their prayers is because you don't know their private lives. If you know their private life and know their mistakes, you will understand that prayer is not based on who I am. It's based on what Christ has done. I'm telling you. Someone said, what does that mean? Let me explain what that means to you. Why does it say pray in the name of Jesus Christ? It's a pray based on who Christ is. So it's not based on the fact that I'm a worker, I'm a pastor. I'm praying in the name, in the full authority of what Christ has done. That's what the Bible says. This is the confidence we have in him. Whatsoever we ask according to his will. Because prayer works with confidence. These are dimensions in prayer, sir. Prayer works with confidence. He says, what does he say? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you are praying, 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 but your believing is not adding up to your prayer. And that's why you see the reason. People are praying. This. See, someone is praying. He wants to pray for the dead uncle or something to get up from the dead. <laughs> Come up in Jesus' name. Come up. And he's crying. <laughs> Inside. You are crying because you have lost him. That's what you know and you believe. What you are saying is your prayer that means nothing. So the man doesn't get up because inside. When you see people that will raise the dead up, they don't cry when they see the dead. Read the Bible. People that raised the dead never cried. Even when just Christ died at the cried at the tomb of Lazarus, what did he cry? He cried for them that you mean you can't believe me. He didn't cry because of Lazarus. When he got there, Master said, if you have been here, he said, don't worry. I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. 
So the, you just step in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And that's it. Are you here? Are you seeing the missing point right now? Mark eleven twenty four again. Let's look at it. Because I want to... <laughs> next week is fire. Where is God? See what it says. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, what? Believe. That what? It's a condition to the next one. What's the next one? And you shall what? Have them. So, until you believe, you receive them. Whose work is it to receive? Oh, whose work is it to receive? So, question. You have been praying. But have you been receiving? He said, and for you to have them, you must what? Receive them. And how do you receive? You receive by believing. How do you believe? Let me close with that. Jo- Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. That was why when that man came to Jesus Christ and said, believe, I'm able to do this. He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. He knew that his unbelief would become a problem. So you are you praying, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I believe. <laughs> Someone is saying, I, I stopped the rain in Jesus' name. This is the prayer. I stopped the rain in Jesus' name. And you take an umbrella out. See, see, you, you are only laughing, but is that not how we pray? Uh, th- thank you, my brother. God bless you. That's how we pray. That's how we pray. You are, you are believing God, your wife will get pregnant. When you get home that night, you lock the door. Whatever you have not done before, you do it that night. You say, this is believing. It's not a matter that I feel like I'm honey. It's not, it has nothing to do with honeyness. This is believing. By the time you are done, you say you are pregnant. You are pregnant. You are pregnant. Praise the Lord. So someone says, I believe that things will get well. If you believe that you are significant as God has called you, the way you treat yourself, you'll not treat yourself that way. I'm telling you the truth. Some of you don't treat yourself with respect. You don't, you don't even know. I want to say something. Why do you put yourself in situations where you always have to apologize? You don't respect yourself. You tell someone 10 o'clock, you come at 11. You are always apologizing. You borrow money, you don't return it. Yeah, because you don't even think, you don't even think you're a big deal. I respect myself. I'm a big deal. Listen, if you are in this church, you are committed to transformation. That's, that's the only thing. Someone says, what do you mean? I, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me put it out clear. If you stay in this church for six months, nothing happens to you. Pack your load, go to another church. Because it means that you are not hearing anything. You can't be in this kind of anointing that is here and nothing happens to you. You think, well, I'm not here to joke up. I, I receive a divine calling. Not that I'm among those people that say in the name of just PLC. We didn't start for money. We received a divine calling. This is not a social gathering, sir. All I needed to do as I preach the word, you believe and receive. You follow. Because if God does not work, let's go and serve a good now. Let's just know once and for all. Ah. This is how confident you must be in this thing. Someone say, ah, you know, you can have corona and die. You say, me. Not their mate. Corona has nothing on me. Nothing. I'm not among those that die. I'm not those among those that get sick. None. When all of you were locked in your house, go and check my Instagram. I was going out every day, meeting hundreds of people, touching them without marks or nothing. One of the church members called my wife. He said that pastor is doing too much. Hey, we're afraid for pastor. No, no, no. We will wear marks because God may said so, but faith is not a mark. So the Bible said, those that put their faith in the horses of Egypt, they will fail because they are horses. I'm not saying don't wear marks. Please wear your mask. But, but don't put faith in mask. Are you here? Your uncle cannot help you say, I'm finished. How can your uncle not help you? It means you are finished. Where is your God the Father? But, but the reason why is exactly what you believe. And let me say something. There was a study done. And says the most successful people in the world, one of the things they had was that self-belief. You start, let, let me tell you. Let, look at me, everybody. Can I talk to you today? We say, anywhere in the slow, my fish shall step upon, I will possess it. Ah, this IT industry, this consulting, I possess it in Jesus' name. But question, you really do not believe that in that IT, you can mark up those that are in America. You know inside you. So 
So although you are praying global recognition, it can never happen because inside you, you know it's not possible. You walk into Zene Bank and say, I'm, I'm the next MD. You know, you know that you can't be nothing there. So what we do is a lot of self-deceit. No self-deceit. You're saying that you do, you do, you do. And the problem is this. We are praying, but guess what? We are believing in two ways. How do you believe? Just chapter 1, verse 8. See what the Bible says. It said, This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but you will meditate upon it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written therein, and then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. What did he say? By meditation, it will affect your choices and belief system. You will now make choices that will make you prosper. How do you believe? Mark Romans chapter 10 in a practical way. How do you believe? Romans chapter 10. The Bible says, how will they believe except they hear? Yes or no? Talk to me. It says, how will they believe except they what? So what does that mean? Believing is predicated on hearing. What do you hear? You hear what the word says. So you find scripture, you find scriptures. You know, many of you that are close to me, you know, I have a telegram group. Many of you that are close to me, many of you that are close to me, I, you know, sometimes I'll, on, my, on my telegram group, or my, maybe the pastor's group, I'll post a picture. I'll just post a scripture. And what I do is this. this is what, you don't know what I'm doing. I take some scriptures. I do screenshot myself because I have to work on my believing. When I do the screenshot, before I sleep, I ping up my phone. I read the scripture. I meditate and sleep off. You know why I do that? Because you have two kinds of mind, the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious mind can sleep, but the subconscious mind is what makes your decision for you without you knowing it. But the subconscious mind does not sleep at all. It does not sleep at all. That's why when you are dreaming, it's your subconscious mind that is what bringing out things to you. That's why if you ate food in the afternoon, you dream of eating at night. Your subconscious mind keep on repeating things. He has a girl you like, you will see her kissing you in a dream. Your conscious mind is programming things for you. You know what I do? So that my subconscious mind does not program nonsense. I look at the word day and night. I read what I want to see. What I want to read. I will be like the tree, uh, palm tree. I will flourish like the palm tree and grow like the seed of Lebanon. I, those are my last thoughts at night. I put it there. So that when I'm asleep, my sub, it can enter into my subconscious mind. And I can be waking up with thoughts of how I will prosper, how I will do well. I can be waking up those thoughts. Many of you will stay at night. You are chatting. You are watching Telemundo, this and this and this, all these things. Can't you see the kind of dreams you have? In the dream, they are kissing you. You see that they are, someone is sleeping with you. You ask this husband. He's from Telemundo. He's not even a demon. Telemundo just came into you. He said it was um, Antonio. Antonio just came. You watch some people sleeping like this. They'll be shooting that dream. They say, it's not demon. No. It's the action of him you watch. <laughs> you know, it's the action of him. You'll be shaking. Some of you, you'll be midnight call of love and love and love and love and love. Instead of you to program your mind for something that can be more effective. When you program your mind that way, in your sleep, you, what you want, you give your mind work to do. I say, mind, when I'm sleeping, be thinking about this. Sometimes this is what happens to me. I will just wake up and I will know something I don't know how I knew it. And what has happened is that the subconscious mind begins to process that scripture. And it translates it into a practical step I can take. And I take that step and there's victory. Praise the Lord. What do some people meditate about? The last thing they check at night is NCDC reports of coronavirus. When you check that kind of thing at night, what do you see in your dreams? So you understand what you have been dreaming about, right? That's good. You will check how people have lost their job, how things have happened. That's what you see in your dream. Praise the Lord. You want to pray? You want to pray? Or let me give you one scripture you can pray about and meditate about. So believe in. So how do you believe? You believe by what? Hearing. You believe by what? So how do you hear? You begin to say to yourself. You begin. Don't just. You have to hear. You have to what? Use your mouth to say it. Use your mouth to what? Say it. Don't say what you don't want. Say what you want. Psalm 92 verse 12. 
Are you there? Let's say it together. Don't say the righteous. Are you righteous? Say, I shall flourish like the palm tree. I shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Hold on. Let me tell you how, why this does not work. Now, a lot of you don't study a lot of Bible. And it's just, if you're that way, it's just unfortunate. Like, if you don't join the early morning prayer meeting, it's just unfortunate. I don't know what to say to you. When you say, I flourish like palm tree, let me tell you something. Until your mind understands what they're talking about, it cannot form a picture. Do you know what it means that to flourish like a palm tree? Then do a research on palm tree, how they flourish. So when you come to an understanding, you say it with clear picture. What does it mean when it says, I'm a cedar of Lebanon? Just Google, what is cedar of Lebanon? Hope you know, once a palm tree begins to grow, it stays for how many years? What? What? 100 years, the palm tree is still there. So what he's saying is that my growth is sustainable in respective of seasons and circumstances. He said, I flourish like palm tree. 100 years, I'm still doing well. I'm still, even when I die physically, what I left on earth, my children are eating of it. When you say that, it registers inside. I'm like a tree. Amen. Because your mind does not understand what you have said. Can we turn to this way prayer? So when you want to pray about something, before you just open your mouth, Father, I get it. No, 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 no. Calm down. What do you believe? Do you believe what you're going to ask for? How do you believe? You'll find the scripture. And that's why you might want to go online and go to our research, our research prayer point guides, our research um, devotionals. Find the scripture. When you get the scripture, you meditate. When you meditate, you accept it. See, what he said does not have to be reality, but accept it. Fire will spill out of heaven. Let's pray.